Hello, Mr. Wondering Trader. What are you doing here today? So, um, you guys, I just stumbled upon this guy who I noticed actually outside of our villager breeding area in the World Tour episode, but that was uh, when I was finishing things up. So obviously we didn't go and visit him there. So let's see what this guy has brought to trade. So he's he's selling bubble coral block for three emeralds, tube coral block for three emeralds, black dye for one emerald. Okay, so you get three black dye for one emerald. That's actually a pretty good trade in my opinion, because of course black dye isn't the easiest to come across. Um, he also sells blue orchids for an emerald, allium for an emerald, and finally gunpowder for one emerald. So um, these top two trades, not really concerned about. Bottom three trades I think are actually horrible, so I wouldn't ever choose those. But this trade here I think is actually a good deal. If I had some emeralds, I'd probably buy some. Um, let me quickly check. We don't have our chests here anymore, do we? No. So uh, there's no chance that we're going to be able to buy anything from him today, unfortunately. Let's check out the llamas a sec. Uh, can we breed these? Uh, sorry, not breed, but tame these guys and take them away from him. I'm not sure if we can or not, but uh, they're a very interesting pair of characters, aren't they? These guys, look at them staring at me. Anyway, you guys, hello and welcome to episode 101 of the Minecraft Let's Play. Of course, we had the World Tour in the last episode and yesterday a brand new series on the channel. So I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed those two videos and we just really wanted that episode 100 to uh, settle on the channel a bit so that everybody had a chance to view it. And I think by now you've all had a good look at the World Tour and kind of established whether or not you know where things are in relation to uh, in, t in our world. And of course, if you've had the chance to download the world and check it out for yourself as well. So uh, time to get on with, I guess, uh, 50 more episodes until the next world tour. So we're in 1.14, of course, and we've been in this uh, update for two episodes now. So I think today, once again, we're going to play with a few of the new features. And firstly, I want to... Uh, try and get our automatic um our automatic wool farm up and running so first things first we're gonna dive right into a mining session of course uh, down in the mining area apparently i can't even jump anymore so uh, that's nice to know but as i was saying we're going to dive into a mining session straight away down in our mine um, and then any iron that we get from that trip we're going to convert straight into shears and pop them all into our 1.14 wool farm because if you guys don't remember now you can actually use dispensers to shear sheep and of course that farm design is uh, suitable for this update so we're going to go ahead and load up a few of those dispensers and see if we can get that thing running because if we can that'll be quite nice we should have a wall on demand at that point so uh, where are we going we need to actually be in the mine Actually, no, we don't. We need to go and collect our uh, tools and, of course, shulker boxes first. So this is the right thing to do. We're about to jump right into the mining session here, you guys. So, of course, I'm going to pop a bit of music on, speed the footage up, and create a time lapse, or mine lapse, as we prefer to call it occasionally, of course, for you guys. And then after we're done with that, of course, it won't take too long because that'll be a waste of footage. But after we are done, as I was saying, we'll go ahead and craft up all of the iron into shears, pop them into the automatic wool farm, and we'll just see how effective that thing is going to be. So uh, here we go. See you on the other side.
Okay guys, so as you can see, we made it safely back from the mine and we're over in the furnace area. So um, we're gonna pop down our shulker box and check out just how much iron we managed. So 26, uh, 26, 42 pieces I mean to say. Uh, we've also got 18 gold that will stick into the system here as well. So unfortunately not as much as I would have liked to uh, gain, but we'll, we'll work with what we've got. So uh, we'll split that into there and that into there. And we'll do the same on the other side. Um, there we go. And we'll send it out and let's just see how quickly these furnaces are actually going to run so as you can see already this is much quicker than the regular furnaces there we go that's one piece done already uh let's wait for another piece there we go that's two pieces done already so so far we've smelted 14 items in a matter of seconds so uh these blast furnaces really are the real deal so let's stop this and just check that we've okay yep everything should be filtering through the system right now which is good and once we've smelted all of this iron up, I'll bring you guys back in and we'll go ahead and craft up those shears and hopefully get our 1.14 automatic wool farm up and running. The smelting has finished and first thing on the agenda is to go ahead and craft our blocks of gold up. So let's pop those away in this chest here. Okay, so uh, we're looking good in terms of gold really. So now we can go ahead and craft up our shears. So what we want to do is just split the stacks evenly like that. That will give us 21 shears. Um, and that's not even enough to fill our inventory, funnily enough. So uh, this could be um, this could be a bit of a uh, a bit of a small time upgrade for the farm at the moment. But of course, we will work on getting more shears into the system eventually. But let's go ahead and pop a few of these in, and then we'll see if this thing is going to in fact do what we want it to do. So how are we going to do this? Because we don't have clear access to all of the dispensers. I guess we could just pop one into the uh, left hand side on each of the farms at the moment and then we'll do the same maybe on a few of them on the right hand dispenser just so that we've got a bit of a, a bit of um, a bit of choice I guess for the systems to use uh, over here we might have to access it from the other side there we go and pop that in so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these dispensers filled up as I said only the ones on the left hand side for now and then after we've used up the first 16 shears we'll go ahead and place the remaining five in a few of the others and then I'll bring you guys back in and we can see if this thing's actually going to function on its own okay guys so we've um, we've distributed the shears amongst each of the uh, cells here so hopefully in a second we will get some action in this farm and we can uh, see that it works, but so far it doesn't look like anything has been sheared. Of course, we haven't sheared any of these in a long time, so um, if any of them do not have their wall, then we can basically assume that the uh, machine has worked the way it should do. So let's go ahead and check the back ones over here as well. Um, at the moment, everything's looking the same as it always was. And as I said, I'm just trying to uh, catch one of these in action so that we can confirm, as I say, that this works. But so far, nothing of note to show, which is a shame. I wish this would work a bit quicker because I don't want to keep you guys hanging around forever, of course. And it's going to be difficult to uh, quickly catch it in action if I do happen to see it whilst I'm not recording. But I think the best, uh, the best way to go about this would be to wait off camera and then quickly pause the game once one of them does get sheared and then I can bring you guys back in and we can see if the machine, of course, spits out the wall into the system here. And if it does, then we can get on our merry way and be happy in the thought that this thing does actually work after all of the effort we put into it. Okay, where was that? Where was that actually? One second before we go. I just heard one of the pistons fire, but don't see anything in terms of change. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this farm is working in the way it should. So, um... This dirt block here just got eaten, but as you can see, all three sheep still retain their wool. And if we come around the back and check this dispenser, it does have a pair of shears in it, and they didn't take any durability either. So uh, it cannot be the case that he was sheared and regrew his wool. Um, so I really don't know what's going on here, whether we need to replace the dispenser, whether there's something else I need to do, but I'm really hoping that we didn't just build this farm for no reason. That would be so super annoying. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that we built it for no reason because of course it still does work manually. So we can come and uh, share these wool on our own terms if we want to, but if this thing doesn't work automatically, I will be ever so slightly disappointed. So um, I think we'll just move on to something else for uh, today. And we can come back to this at another point in time. And if any of you guys know what's wrong with this, please do let me know because I'd love to get it fixed and working again. Or maybe I'm just doing something wrong and not realizing it. But as I say, if you guys have got the answer, then let me know and I'll get this thing uh, hopefully fixed. 
and in good working order. So we're at the Guardian farm and that is because my pickaxe needs some repairs. So let's switch that over to the offhand slot. And I kind of wanted to explore again something that we uh, realized in the world tour. So it seemed to me that the area of effect on swords, um, the damage has been increased. So let's go ahead and test that out. Um, perhaps not. Let's try these guys here. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell. We do seem to be getting a lot of experience, but... When we did the world tour, it almost appeared as though I swiped the uh, mobs and pretty much all of them died. But maybe I was uh, deceived by the number of mobs that we actually had in the system because it doesn't seem to be as effective today. It's definitely more effective or it feels more effective, definitely, for sure, as I say. Uh, we are, or seem to be, I don't know the calculations for sure and I haven't checked this on the wiki, but we seem to be getting a lot more experience with... Uh, every sword slash so I would say based on personal experience things have changed but I still think we do need to get a sword that uh, of course has the sweeping edge enchantment on it for uh, the ultimate efficiency but yeah as I say things may have changed a little bit anyway we're gonna just finish up here by um, just fixing all of our tools mainly our pickaxe and then I'll catch you guys back over at the ravine base to uh, see how we're gonna finish this episode up now that we have repaired our tools, we can get on with some work again. So um, I was just checking a few of the new crafting recipes and I came across something that I want to look into. And that is the new uh, wood type sign. So uh, of course we've got the regular oak signs that you couldn't really modify during uh, the updates up to 1.13. But now that 1.14 is out, we actually have new sign types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out these uh, signs because of course dark oak is the theme of the base. So maybe it'll look good if we have dark oak signs as well. So let's go ahead and type in rockets. And of course that is the way it's going to look. I think we might transition to these signs. And another thing I want to try out because I think you can dye the lettering now if... Uh, if I'm remembering correctly. So let's craft up some light gray dye. Oh, okay, so uh, ink sacks actually now you have to be crafted into black dye before you can use them. And so does bone mail, interesting. So there's new dye types in the game now and I guess you have to craft the uh, original dyes into their actual dye form now before you can use them, which is uh, cool. So we're gonna take the gray dye and we're gonna use that with some more of the white dye. So of course we're gonna pop that in there like so. Do that and then use this to change the coloring to gray. So we now we've got the dark oak signs with the gray text, which of course matches the gray here and the dark oak here. So I think we're gonna transition all of the signs into a similar design. So I'll be right back once we're done with that. And then there's a couple of other things I think we should check out. And um, then we can think about wrapping up the episode. So as I said, give me a second and I'll bring you guys right back in. Okay guys, I do not know about your opinion on this, of course, but I really like this, the change in color and text color of the sign. So uh, we're gonna stick with what we've got here, the dark oak and gray. It really adds to the design. And all I'm hoping for now is uh, that Mo Yang add in the option to have wood-based chests as well. Because if we could get some dark oak chests in here, I'm sure that would uh, make things, again, a lot better. But this looks really cool. I like this uh, added feature here where you can um, change the text color and have different colored signs. Uh, one thing I will mention though, if you tear down one of these signs, you are not getting your die back. So just keep that in mind if you... Uh, if you're writing these signs out, make sure they're spelt correctly and all that good stuff first time round. Because as I say, if I was to tear this down now, I would be getting the sign back and the text would revert back to black. I wouldn't see the gray die ever again. So just be sure when you're typing that you're getting things correctly uh, spelt and all that good stuff. So let's put away a few of the signs here and we actually cannot. So we're gonna need another one of these signs to make a new miscellaneous items and blocks chest. So let's just go ahead and do that one here. Misc items and, oops, wrong one, and blocks. Everything spelled good, misc, items, and blocks. Yep, die that one, and we can just pop the signs in there. Also these torches, because I don't need those right at the moment. Um, unless we have any in here, we do not. Okay, that's fine. So, next on the list of things that I'm going to do in today's episode is to get up to the animal farm, but you guys know the, uh, the slime block launcher has kind of uh, had its day already, which is unfortunate, because we really, we only just built this thing, as you guys know, so uh, yeah, I don't know if they're ever going to be fixed again. Hopefully they will be, but for now we're just going to have to take this route up to the animal farm. It's a bit more dangerous, of course, but it does get you up there eventually. And I want to come over to the cows, and first of all we're going to breed them up, of course, just to make sure that we're maintaining a population in the farm. Because the last thing we want to do is, uh, of course, 
kill kill the remainder of the cows that we have and force them to uh, become extinct, at least in our own uh, little area here. And then once we've bred a few of them up, we need some leather. Perfect, that will be just enough because we need to craft ourselves one bookcase uh, or a bookshelf, we should probably call it because that is the correct term. So let's head back down to small storage. And you guys might already be, uh, be sort of clued in to where we're taking this. Um, we need to come over to this chest and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're gonna take this over here, craft up our books like that. And then we're gonna need six planks. Uh, so we need two of those like that. Um, okay, I got them both, fine. I just, it looked like one of the uh, logs actually stayed in my inventory there for a second. Got our bookshelf and now we need some slabs. So let's go ahead and craft up the slabs here. And actually we don't need to craft them up because it looks like we've already got a bunch. So we need to do this and then we need to do this and that. And that crafts us the lectern, which of course is going to be used for the uh, 100 subscriber monument outside. So let me return a few of these items, namely the wheat back up to the farm, get rid of this stake. And I'll meet you guys out at the 100 subs monument and we'll get that thing fixed. And also probably write a new book as well because there was one name that I needed to add to the uh, list up there. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are at the 100 subscriber monument and doesn't it look great basking in its glory up there. So uh, we've got the lectern, we've got the book and quill, we've got the witness 100 original copy. So uh, where should we put the lectern? Maybe just pop it back here for now. Of course this uh, could be moved if we want to. And there's one final thing we need to do. So the Witness 100 book looks like this. Of course, we've got a few of your guys' names in there. The new book and quill looks like this, exactly the same so far. However, there's one more name to add to the list. And that is of course, Zan's name. Before we go ahead and sign it, and this one is going to be called Witnessed 100 Volume. Oh, we can't even put volume two, damn it. That is not good. Um, in that case, we will go ahead and just sign it off as Witnessed 100 once again. So we've got Witnessed 100 and Witnessed 100. So this is the old one. We'll go and sacrifice this to the lava gods in a second, but this is the new one. Of course, with the extra name on the bottom for Zan, because he deserves to be there and he wants to be there, I believe. Let me know if you don't, Zan, and of course I'll revert back to the old book, but I believe that you do want to be there. So let's pop it on the lectern and there you go. Um, can we actually read this directly from the lectern? We can, that's nice. So you can take the book, you can press done and then you can pop it back when you're ready. That is a really cool addition. I quite like that as well. It looks cool in terms of design as well. So uh, definitely a usable block for the future. Uh, this is such a weird um, a weird hitbox. So I've never seen a hitbox like this in Minecraft before, a diagonal one that doesn't even appear to contain all of the texture of the block itself. Very strange. Anyway, as I said, let's go ahead and sacrifice the original Witness 100 book. And then we can move on to finishing this video up, saying goodbye and of course, uh, yeah, that's about it actually. So see you in a second. Okay guys, so a sorrowful time is upon us. It is about time to say goodbye to the original Witnessed 100 book. So this one didn't make the cut because we of course didn't include one critical name at the bottom of the list here. And unfortunately for this reason, the Lava Gods will be receiving a donation on this weary, sad day. So after three, we're gonna pop it in the lava. One, two, three. There it goes, and that final sizzle of the book will be a big piece of history in 100 years time, don't you worry about it. Um, of course, I'm kidding you guys, there is no meaning behind that book at all, but we have updated the Witnessed 100, and the lectern, of course, is in place with the new book on it, which is good to see. So I'm glad we got that figured out, and I think we're gonna take our time to uh, quickly get out of this mine. There we go, and I think it's time to say our farewells for episode 101. All right, you guys, welcome back to the video for the last time for episode 101. I just quickly want to say thank you for all of the support that we received on the last episode of the world tour. Uh, the world tour? The world, the world, get your words out, come on. The last episode of the Let's Play, the world tour, of course. Um, it was all very positive and a lot of congr congratulatory um, words and that type of thing. So. As I say, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to drop a like down below. That will be much appreciated by myself. Also, if you have any questions, any suggestions, any comments, any feedback, anything like that, anything to say in general, pop that down in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. And finally, if you're new around here or you haven't subscribed yet, then be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned to this series and any other videos that we do decide to post on the channel. 
So once again, you guys, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to come and watch my video. I am very grateful to have you here and it's always good to spend some time with you guys and uh, of course make these videos for you. Take care of yourselves, take care of your families and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye for now.